join me today in my kitchen and around the house as I prepare to close out summer and say hello to one of my favorite seasons. Summer has come to an end, but you wouldn't know it by looking at the milk that I'm getting from my Sally. So if you look really closely, you can see the cream lines on these gallon jars. And she's giving me, you know, almost a half gallon of cream to every gallon, which is just amazing. Now, my uh, jerseys do not get any grain. They're grass fed. They're out on pasture. We do give them alfalfa as well, and they're just very happy, I guess. So, you know, I'm going to be sad to see this go when she dries up here. Oh, in a month or so, you know, I'll let her dry up a little bit before she has her next calf. So I'm just really enjoying all of this cream. Stockpiling as much butter as I can in the freezer. Butter freezes really well. So, you know, that's just one of those things. I just, I just, the cream keeps coming in. I keep making butter keep stowing it away in the freezer and just hoping that it will get me through until the next baby calf comes and we are back in the cream again. I shared with you all that my two, both of my cows got bred at the same time. So, you know, I like to have them staggered usually. So this is going to be different. It's not what I would have preferred but that's okay. So what you see on the counter here is a big bowl of sweet potatoes that I actually prepped a few days before filming this, and I'm just adding some butter here. I'm gonna make sweet potato casserole. So we're heading into fall, busting out all my favorite fall recipes. So you might recognize this clip from a couple weeks ago. I actually filmed <laughs> two weeks ago, the video from two weeks ago, and this video just a couple days apart. But a couple weeks ago, I did a lot of prep in the kitchen over the weekend and I didn't get to all the food that I prepped so this was like on a Monday or Tuesday or something that I was getting to some of that food I'd prepped so I had baked sweet potatoes and just stuck them in the fridge now I'm going to finish this up and make my sweet potato casserole so so far I've got oh gosh I don't know quite a few sweet potatoes <laughs> I should really measure. I'll give you guys an approximate recipe in the description. So I've got my baked sweet potatoes. I've got my maybe one stick worth of butter. And let's just call it a half cup of cream. That's what we're going to start um, with for the base of this sweet potato casserole. Now I am going to be adding about, eh, let's call it two-thirds cup of brown sugar. <laughs> you know, this is how I do everything. I never measure until I film it. This is really good motivation for me to film things it's because it forces me to actually think about how much I actually use in each recipe and write it down and record it. That way, you know, I don't know, maybe one day my, my kids will want these recipes and I'll have them written down somewhere. So I'm just mixing this all up with an immersion blender and the baby's hungry. So I'm going <laughs> to scoop some out and set him in his little high chair and let him eat while I finish this up. So I made quite a big batch. This was <laughs> quite a few sweet potatoes. I think I'll have some extra, so I will probably end up just uh, putting some of this into a little container and keep it for him for a little snack this week because he did really seem to like it, although he's kind of uh, falling asleep in his chair there, which is always super cute. I love when they do that. All right, so I've just got a nine by nine here and I'm going to fill that almost to the top with my sweet potato mix. And I did, like I anticipated, I had some left over here. You know, I'm not the type, I don't make baby food. I never do that. Even when, you know, they're six, seven months or whatever and they start eating solids, I don't make baby food. We just do like the baby led weaning or whatever. To me, it's not really so much like a technique as it is just <laughs> letting the baby try stuff off of my plate. So that's, that's how I feed babies. All right, now I'm making the pecan crumb topping. And I have another, you know, let's just call it a half cup, a stick of butter um, in the same bowl. And this time a little bit more, maybe closer to a cup of brown sugar. You want lots of brown sugar if you're doing a crumb topping, if you want to do it right. And then a um, half cup of flour. And now I'm going to whisk this together. You, you know, it would probably be better to use a fork, actually. You're just kind of cutting the butter in to your uh, brown sugar and flour mixture. 
you don't want to mix it until it's totally smooth so for a crumb topping you just you just want to cut it and you can see it's kind of like a rough texture there then I have a cup of pecans and I chopped just rough chopped these pecans you can use pre chopped pecans or whatever you have and last but not least a little bit of cinnamon let's call it a teaspoon for good measure <laughs> a teaspoon of cinnamon that sounds good to me and this is going to go on top of the sweet potato casserole now if you really 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 love sweet potato your sweet potato casserole with marshmallows just give this a try be open-minded give it a try because everyone who has tried this that i everyone you know i've made this for I, I make it for a lot of family gatherings and stuff and I have a lot of people tell me that they don't usually like sweet potato casserole you know with marshmallows but they really really like this a lot my husband he could kind of you know sweep with anything sweet potato he could take it or leave it but he really likes this um, everyone in my family really likes this it's always a big hit so then after I get this crumb topping spread on here then this will just bake at 375 for about 25 to 30 minutes so I've got a few things that are going to go in the oven here uh, this I've got two two ovens in my kitchen and this particular one that I just put the casserole in is really wide I just love it I can fit so much in there at one time all right so I've got my butter going you know I you saw me uh I ended up with a whole gallon of cream. I had had some saved already, and then by the time I skimmed the cream off of those other two gallons, I had two two half gallon jars here, so a gallon of cream, and I'm gonna turn this all into butter, pack it away, freeze it away. Well, some of it I'm actually gonna use today in one of the recipes that I'm going to be showing you. So when I make butter, you guys have seen me do this before, I use my food processor and I just keep it going. I keep the process going. So when one batch comes out, I uh, drain the buttermilk, kind of wash the butter to get as much buttermilk out as possible, salt it and either use it or pack it away. And then I get the next batch going. So that's buttermilk right there. I'll save that buttermilk. I might culture it. I might not. <laughs> I don't know. You know, buttermilk freezes really well too. One thing that I've done before is I actually put buttermilk in popsicle molds and then freeze that. And it's, you know, about a half cup. So when a recipe calls for buttermilk, you know, I can just pull however many of those out to make you know, this little half cup frozen buttermilk uh, popsicles and then make my recipe. All right, so what I'm making today with this first batch of butter is one of my favorite things. It is sourdough chocolate chip cookies. So I'm gonna call what I put in that little pot there about a cup of butter, because that's how much you need for the recipe. So <laughs> two sticks of butter, that's what you start with. Now the key to getting really good sourdough cookies is browning your butter. You have to brown the butter first. It's non-negotiable. Otherwise, you'll end up with a really cakey cookie. So if you like your cookies to be more cakey, and some people do, then don't brown the butter. But if you want them like soft and chewy and gooey, you gotta brown the butter. So I got that butter going there. Pulled my next <laughs> batch of butter out. Added some more cream in. We are just gonna keep this train rolling. And I'm keeping a close eye on my butter that is browning this whole time because oh man if you've got like homemade butter and you burn it that is such a shame ask me how i know i have done it all right now the next step to get ready to make my cookies is separating eggs uh egg whites from egg yolks so this is another thing when you're making sourdough cookies you only want to use egg yolks here's why when you add starter half of that your your sourdough starter Half of that starter content is actually water. Um, and in cookie recipes, you don't usually add water or milk. There's no liquid component like that. So to make up for that liquid component in the sourdough starter, you take out the egg whites and you brown the butter. I hope this is all making sense, guys. This recipe is on my blog. I will link it in the description for you to see. So I've got my egg yolks ready. I'm still <laughs> working on my butter here. You can see on the stove that my... Uh, initial batch of butter there is, is looking nice and brown and caramelized it's ready to go so now I'm gonna keep on rolling with my cookies I've got my egg yolks my two egg yolks in the bowl now I'm adding three quarters cup of sugar and three quarters cup of brown sugar 
and I do have little people, you know, in the kitchen underfoot. I just edit them out as much as possible, but you can see the camera move here. So some little person is helping me out filming today by moving my camera. Uh, my little guy really loves to do that. He takes the tripod and just pushes the camera around. It's super cute. So just mixing up my egg yolks and my sugars. Now I'm going to add in that butter that is nice and browned. I'm just going to pour that in, mix it into my eggs and my sugars. And the next ingredient is uh, the star of the show here, which is the sourdough starter. So you know, you can use discard inactive starter, or you can use active starter. It really doesn't matter. You need three quarters cup. I'm, this is a half cup, <laughs> so I'm just over pouring it because I need more. So three quarters cup of starter. And you know, you can, I'm going to bake these cookies right away. So this is not going to be a fully fermented recipe, just mixing that starter in. But if you want to cold proof your cookie dough, you can in the fridge, just make sure to cover it really well. You do not want this dough rising. <laughs> All right, now I'm going to add in my flour. This recipe calls for two cups of flour. I'm just using, you know, uh, all purpose flour from, I get the artisan white all purpose unbleached from Azure Standard in 50 pound bags. It's, it's wonderful. Now I'm adding a teaspoon of baking powder, a teaspoon of baking soda, one teaspoon of salt, and after I get my salt here, I will add one teaspoon of vanilla and mix all of this together. Once all of this is mixed up, then I will add in the chocolate chips and I also add either pecans or walnuts. I like nuts in my cookies, but you know, some people don't. If you don't, <laughs> leave them out. I think the recipe, I, I think the recipe on my blog just has chocolate chips, if my memory serves me right. So, you know, just to be a little bit extra, I'm adding half of the chocolate chips in now, and the other half I will add in just a minute, and you'll see why. But first I've got my, I'm using walnuts today, because I used up a lot of my pecans for the sweet potato casserole, which you can see it's setting, setting right over there, and it just looks delicious. So I've got my chopped walnuts here, these will go into the cookie dough and then the other half of the chocolate chips. So total it's like 12 ounces of chocolate chips, whatever that comes out to. Maybe it's a cup. I don't know. I don't measure very well. Um, you know, when I'm, when, I, when I'm making a recipe for my blog, then I measure. But then, you know, when I'm doing things from memory, I really just don't. So the second half of the chocolate chips, I'm going to chop up like this and it just makes the cookies. It, it gives them, um, what do we always say? It gives it pizzazz. That's, that's right. Gives it just that little extra touch. Um, extra delicious. You know, it tastes the same, but <laughs> I like doing it this way. This cookie dough is just fabulous. So if you want, you can chill this dough. Um, you know, if you're finding that it's a little bit difficult to handle, you can chill it. You can freeze it. It freezes really well. Um, like I said, you could cold proof it in the fridge for several days for up to a week. That would be just fine. But I'm going to go ahead and bake these cookies right now. And one last little element of pizzazz will be added. And that is flaky salt. Flaky salt just immediately jazzes everything right on up. Um, you know, anytime you've got anything chocolate or caramel or even just sourdough artisan bread with fresh butter. You got to add your flaky salt. So I'm going to bake these cookies at 350. I'll check them at 10 minutes. Sometimes they take a little bit longer. So you can see my husband, he's looking for something in here and that is the buffalo dip that I prepared over the weekend and we actually ended up eating out quite a bit. So I didn't make it, but I'm going to make it now. And he knew I was going to make it. So he's um, wondering where it is. So I'm just going to stick this in my oven along with everything else I have in here and let that bake. So I, I did show this buffalo dip on one of my, you know, recent videos. And this is something that I make a lot in the fall because my husband likes to watch football. You know, I got to keep the uh, snacks flowing 
when he is <laughs> watching football. Um, it's, I always get asked to bring this to like family functions too, which there seem to just be a lot more family functions in the fall and winter. So my cookies are finished and looking delicious. I'm going to set these to the side. And while I'm at it, I need to sample the um, sweet potato casserole, you know, just for good measure, make sure it's not poison and uh, looks delicious. I think we'll be just fine. <laughs> all right, so I've got all my butter that I made. Well, you know, I used some of it for the cookies, but now I'm going to put the rest into this mold, press it, get any last little bit of buttermilk out, and then it will be ready to wrap in parchment paper. And all of this will go in the freezer because I've got plenty of butter out. I've got some in the fridge, and I don't need any more today, so this will just go be added into my butter stockpile. Also, no need to be alarmed. I do realize that the cheesecloth I'm using looks very dirty. It's not. It's just stained from using it to drain tea. So that is tea stained. It's not, not a dirty cheesecloth. All right. I think I'm going to be able to shut my oven off. I've got a one more batch of cookies in there finishing up, but um, my buffalo dip is finished, so my husband will be happy about this because he can eat this while he's waiting on supper. And oh, it's just so delicious and cheesy. So we ended up with quite the spread this night. You know, I had the buffalo dip as an appetizer and we had cookies for dessert. I had a big hearty dinner with the sweet potato casserole on the side. And I think I used up everything that I had prepped the weekend before. So I will link the video from that weekend food prep in the top right hand corner if you want to check that out. Now another thing that we were doing over these couple of days when I was filming this video is cutting wood. Well I say we. <laughs> the guys were cutting wood because you know it's unseasonably warm right now but the cold weather will come and we do have a wood stove so we want to be ready because I put that thing to use as much as possible and I'm so looking forward to firing up the wood stove for fall. All right, now the next thing that I'm going to be showing you is not a thrift haul for a change. I actually bought something new that I am really excited about. All right, so I've got my beautiful new set of enamel coated cast iron here. Everything you see aside from this. So let me tell you why I got all of these things. It's because not long ago I was at Aldi and I saw this huge six quart uh, Dutch oven and it was like 30 bucks, maybe not even, I think it was 28, something like that. I'm like, that is just crazy cheap. And I had been seeing that the Aldi brand, the Crofton brand was actually really good in some, some Facebook groups I'm in. You know, I don't have a personal Facebook, I have a business Facebook, um, but I am in some groups for baking and just different things that I'm into like that. And everyone has been raving about the Aldi brand cast iron. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna try it. But this just seems too good to be true. Like this huge, what is it, six quart Dutch oven. I mean, this is like $150 or maybe more for one of these. If you get some of the nicer brands, I'm not gonna drop names, but you guys know the brands. <laughs> um, so $29, $28, dollars was just a steal. And I have used this thing several times already. It is amazing. I have baked in it at really high temps in the oven. I think the, all of these are safe for up to 450. And I've gone up to 450. And um, you can see I've used this several times. It's perfect. They're just perfect. So I bought this one. And when I saw in all these ads, and yes, I'm an old lady now because I look out for all these <laughs> weekly ads. When I saw that they were going to be having new variations of this Crofton cast iron, I knew that I had to have these if they were, you know, that high of quality. So I got all six of these pieces. So what you see here is two little baby two quart Dutch ovens here. And then I've got two, I think these are four and a half quart, the oval ones. So I just got one of each, one blue and one of the cream color. And then I got two bread ovens. All of this, all six pieces was $138. So the little ones were 17, these oval 27. I think these bread ovens were 25. That is just a steal because one bread oven in the fancy brand 
is like $135. So I got all six of these pieces for $138. That is my steal of the week, steal of the month, maybe even steal of the year, I don't know. Too early to tell, we're just getting into holiday season. But I had to tell you about my new set of cast iron here. I'm going to be getting rid of all my old stuff because I've had it for years and years and years and it was handed down to me, it's all chipping. So I just went ahead and replaced it all and these are just beautiful colors. I am not being paid by Aldi to say this, but Aldi, if you wanna send me your money, I'll take it, <laughs> gladly. I just wanted to tell you guys, be on the lookout at your local Aldi for their cast iron. I really hope since these have been so popular, they've been flying off the shelves, that they will start putting out more collections more often. Now, it just wouldn't be a, you know, like homestead YouTuber video wrapping up summer going into fall without a fall front porch refresh. So, gotta do it. It's obligatory. <laughs> this is the first year that I, um in, gosh, five or six years that I have given mums a go. You know, for so many years, I would buy them, and I would kill them, like, within a week. But I actually just gave up on mums. But then I saw a reel on Instagram that had kind of gone viral, and it said that you need to soak your mums for an hour instead of just watering them. So, like, once a week or once every couple weeks, depending on how much sun they get, just soak them completely um, in a big pot or something. You know, dip your whole... whole planter down in a big pot and soak them for an hour. I've been doing that and I have kept my mums alive. Gosh, I actually got them at the beginning of September and I've kept them a secret because I wanted to see if I could keep them alive, but I've done it. I have kept them alive for over a month now. I'm just so uh, proud of myself. So now I think I actually have a promising, you know, future with, with mums. So I am decorating for fall. You know, I don't decorate for every season, but I just really love fall and I just decorate seasonally. You know, I'm not a big Halloween person. I don't have anything as a Christian against Halloween. You know, it's a liturgical holiday. It's Halloween is just short for All Hallows Eve, which is basically like Christmas Eve for All Saints Day. So it's, yeah, just All Hallows Eve. I know people have taken that and twisted it into like super dark and kind of demonic stuff sometimes. But, you know, you can twist anything to be like that. <laughs> Think of some of the best things in life that people take and they're supposed to be sacred and holy and beautiful and they twist them. Well, my answer to that is just don't twist it. Just do the liturgical stuff without the twisted stuff or just don't <laughs> if you don't want to. It doesn't really matter. You don't have to celebrate All Hallows Eve, but you're more than welcome to. You know, when we have the Holy Spirit with us, we're not going to like accidentally participate in devil worship or something. <laughs> That's We don't have to live in fear like that. Like, you have to intentionally participate in the demonic, you know? Um, so, that's my little spiel on Halloween. You can do your own research on it. Everyone has their own two cents, but that's just, you know, the position of the church. So, that is my position as well. Definitely not a hot take. Not like the hidden Gnostic information that uh, people love to pass around this time of year about how you're secretly worshiping Satan if you, you know, dress your kid up as a pumpkin or put a pumpkin on your porch or something. <laughs> it's just all kind of silly to me. Anyway, this wraps up my video for this week. Thank you for tuning in once again. And I will see you all next week. Have a wonderful day.